Good morning everyone, Tracy here from Red Wind Studio in the village of St. Jacobs. Um, I have a little vanity here that I've uh, started working on. It's going to go on hold for a little while because I had a custom piece come in the other day. But I wanted to at least get um, the top, um, get a clear coat on it because I have stripped the top down. As you can see the difference between this and this is the original here. So I've stripped the top down and I have used a stain on it. And the stain that I've used is this one here, whether you can see that, if there's gonna be a glare or not, but it is um, Verithane brand. It's the premium wood stain and it's weathered gray. So that's what I have on here. And it does have, uh, it is an oil based. You do need to put a clear coat over top of this. Um, it's not the type that has it built into it. I prefer to put my own clear coat on. So that's what I've used. Now, because I am using a water-based um, product over top of the stain, I do need to wait 24 hours um, before I can put that on after the, the stain is dried. So um, what I'm going to be doing is I want to have a very matte finish on this. So I'm going to use, again, the same brand that I used before, Verithane. And this is the diamond wood finish, um, and it's, it's matte. It, the can is white. All the rest of theirs are black and blue, but um, their matte one it comes in the, in the white can, as you can see here. So I don't work from the actual can. So what I do is I pour a little bit into one of these little plastic containers that you can pick up at the dollar store and they come with little screw top lids for them and uh, that's what I work out of because when you dip in your Verithane and then you start working it onto your piece you're actually going to pull a little bit of stain up and you're going to get that in into your brush and then you're going to be transferring that back into the stain so if at a later time I wanted to use this clear coat on something very pristine and light, maybe a white or parchment or um, snow, it would show up. It would muddy your clear coat and then it's going to muddy the finish on, a, on another piece. So always um, put it into another uh, container to work from. When I apply my clear coats to a piece, I always use a, a foam brush unless I'm working on something with small spindles, then I'll use a, a small one inch brush to apply it. But typically flat surfaces, I use a foam brush. It leaves um, less, uh, well, you don't really get brush strokes, but you get less texture with one of these. Um, it holds quite a bit and um, they're reusable if you wash them out and if you do this step. So before I even get started, I always wet my sponge. So I dip it into my water and I squish it around a little bit so it absorbs and squish it out best that I can. And then I use a little piece of paper towel and I squish out any of the excess and absorb that up just want it to be damp and the reason for that is as you're working especially on bigger pieces now this one's been used a lot I'm going to come forward so that you can see this but on here you can see there's a bit of a white line developing if I didn't wet this um, and I dipped it in and then started working with it I'd get it would start to dry along here and I get this hard crusty bit and if you get all crusties on here and then try to use it again sometimes those will fall off when you're working and then for some reason you're working on a black piece and you see all these little white bits on it it's the the residue falling off your brush so if you dampen it the whole thing will stay dampened it won't um, dry as quickly and you can reuse them so that's my little tip about foam brushes and being able to reuse them a lot. The matte finishes, um, 
you need to, to obviously stir your products, but um, the clear, co clear top coat from the Fat Paint Company is fairly matte and it's in between matte and satin. And then the Verathane brand that I'm using today, the matte, you need to really, really stir these products. Um, when you think you've stirred them enough, stir them a little bit more. And uh, because when I, the first time I used it, I just stirred it the same as though I was stirring the, uh, a satin um, product. And I wound up having a very patchy finish. It was shiny in some spots and I thought the product was um, not good. No, it, it was me that was not good. I didn't stir it enough to distribute um, whatever is in it that, that keeps it at a nice matte finish. So um, just bear in mind that you do want to uh, stir it a lot. Actually, I'm gonna keep this in my hand. So this product dries fairly quick. So you want to work rather quickly. It is white when it's wet, but it will dry clear. So the trick is get it on, spread it, and leave it alone. So it's okay to go back and forth quickly like this and make sure that you've got it everywhere on your piece and apply a little bit of pressure. But then, because you don't want stagger marks in it, you wanna do nice long strokes. Coming all the way across. You wanna work fairly quickly. So, and then when you get to the edge, Edge. I'm going to move this down a little bit. There we go. So, I'm just going to, because it is foam and you can work it like this, drag it along the side like that. And a light hand so that you're not putting too much product onto the piece. go. I'm going to disappear for a second here and come right back while I do this side over here. Here we go. Now I've stripped and stained down here as well. So I'm going to run my brush along here. Sometimes trying to get into these little spots, you can wind up leaving bubbles. So just be careful you don't apply too much pressure and uh, leave too much product because um, if there is too much, if you get a bit of a puddle, you uh, it won't dry clear. And you could definitely, if you're having um, problems dealing with a big brush like this, uh, for these little small areas, you could switch over to a smaller brush, definitely. Getting it on this side here. I've got some on there. There we go. I'm just going to do this side here and then I'll come back out to the front again. And I haven't had to re dip yet, 
So I'm going to do this side here. starting to, to run low, but I don't want to dip when I'm doing a little wee area like this or I'll have way too much product on my, on my brush. Okay, so I'm going to dip again and then we're going to do the front. Let some run off here. Now I'm going to go in right up against here and I don't want to have too much product on my brush because I don't want to puddle along there. So I'm going to take the tip and I'm going to run it like this in here to get the product there. Then I'm going to run it along like this. And then again up here. And then the full length again back the other way. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little bit too much on here because I need to get it there. That's not too bad, but I have you can't see it, but I've got a bit of a puddle down at this end. So I'm just gonna carefully pull my brush along it. And I'm gonna dip in a little bit more. And I'm gonna get some more product on here. Pull it across. And then I'm going to do the, the finished edge here. too much pressure just a little bit the first coat is usually the most difficult because the wood grain has opened up from staining it so there's a little bit of drag on your brush it's gripping it a little bit so um, your brush doesn't run along it quite as easily Always try to go with the grain but when you get into these little areas like in here along here you can see that you're gonna have to run this way you, there's no way you would wind up with little puddles and pull marks and stuff trying to do it this way um, ultimately if you have a sprayer and you could use a sprayer that would be great um, I don't have that luxury in my studio so do everything by hand so this will dry for three to four hours and I could go ahead and I could put my second coat on once I get my second coat on then and it's fully dried then I would do my wet sanding um, and hopefully if my plan works out while I'm doing my other custom piece in the mornings I'll do little bits and pieces on this one and I'll video it and you can follow along as I work on this piece. Um, this is going to be one that's going to be for sale in the studio. So I think it would be cool for you guys to see it sort of from beginning to end, even though you didn't get to see me stain this part. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, so stay tuned. I don't, I don't have an actual schedule worked out. It's going to be sort of um, bits and pieces here and there while I have time and I get here early enough to be able to do this to show you guys um, the steps involved with getting this vanity all completed. Anyways, that's it for this morning. Um, 
it's Wednesday. I'm open. I open at 10, close at 5. It'd be great to see you guys down at the studio. If you have questions, drop me a line. Um, come on in. I'm always eager to, to help and uh, support my fellow um, furniture painters. Have a great day, people.